Celebrating four years of talk like you've never heard it before, this is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Eastern Time. Uh, listen, we, we're going to talk to my ex-wife in a moment, and I just have to explain, this was recorded yesterday, and everything that could go wrong went wrong. I, I had all kinds of problems with my switcher. The, the switcher is the thing that, you know, runs the video part of the program. And uh, first of all, we had a problem with the fact that she is just completely out of sync, all right? And the other problem I noticed was the first 45 seconds of this interview, she's frozen. So <laughs> don't ask what's wrong. Just listen to the content of it. And uh, as I say at the end of it, think of it as a badly dubbed foreign language film. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, let's check in, okay? Okay. First of all, this is Ronnie Bennett. Second of all, she may go out of sync completely because we don't know what's wrong with Skype today, but there's always something wrong with Skype. <laughs> and lastly, I've got, uh, that's not my fault, folks. What, what, what happened to you? <laughs> you should see the other guy. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, last Thursday I was leaving the building where my chemo clinic is. I had spent the day getting chemo. And you know those rubber mats they put down in buildings when it's been raining outside? Yeah. I tripped over a Oh, boy. Leaving the building. Oh, boy. And went down and smashed my head, and I have a bad elbow and a bad knee now, and, uh, and a black eye, as you can see. What's funny, though, is originally I had a big hematoma up here, mm -hmm. and what I forgot, this happened to me once before about 40 years ago, overnight, blood follows gravity and so from the hematoma up here it moved down here <laughs> there you are <laughs> and, and uh, i was at the supermarket the other day and i've been shopping there for years i know these people you know it's a hi hello how are the kids that sort of thing mm -hmm. as i went through the 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 supermarket not one person mentioned my eye when I told a friend about it on the phone, he said, oh, they just thought you hit the bottle again. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, boy. So that's going to take a while to get yeah, well. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. In case, uh, in case you're just tuning in, she's out of sync, folks. Yes. I, I have again, no I'm idea. out of sync? We, we have no idea why, uh, but uh, we'll just live with it. We, we tried signing on several times with you today, and... Uh, uh, all of a sudden, you would go completely out of sync. So I can't. I don't know anything how to run about how to run Skype. It's up to you. Yeah, I don't either anymore. <laughs> I don't know. It's oh, crazy. Other people do this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So anyway, uh, so it, it, I, this was right outside the hospital. Did you say? Just at the door. Not. It's not a hospital. It's a medical building. And just as I was leaving to go through the door to leave to go get my lift ride home, uh, I tripped over that mat and went down really hard on an elbow and knee in my head. Oh, and my. so, you know, by the way, the, who knew that these places have their own police force? Then the police showed up and it said OHSU police. And then more people came around. There were 10 or 12 people yeah. all trying to help me all at once. and. They insisted on calling the EMTs, who arrived with all the bells and whistles and sirens and wanted to take me to the emergency room. But by then, the pain had gone away, and I stood up, and I wasn't bleeding anywhere, and nothing was broken. Which, by the way, the next day, I was talking to a friend, mm -hmm. and a friend of hers, you know, who lives in Manhattan, was bicycling to work as she does every day. Somebody came around the corner in a car, 100 miles an hour, banged into her, and she broke both 
arms. Both. Think about living with both two broken arms. Wow. You can't. Wow. Wow. Here's Well, you know what happened with my wife was she was walking down the street on Fifth Avenue and some tourist came along and uh, just pushed her by accident uh, and she fell to the ground and broke her knee. So she had to go in, have an operation, have screws put in the knee. Uh, uh, what was it? Uh, 12 weeks of being in a brace and a constant physical therapy. And the doctor says, it'll feel better in about a year. Yeah, that's a, you know. That's how long it took me to feel better after my big surgery in 2017. But think about, you can't use either of your arms, not either one. Yeah. Think yeah. about it. There's absolutely nothing you can do. Nothing. Yeah. Nothing. Oh boy. Well, you know, I mean, uh, what, what uh, all I is what's the prognosis on that horrible thing on your face going away? I don't think there's any bruise. It'll go away in a few days. You know. Now, did you bruise more because of the chemo? I don't think so. I didn't ask. I don't think so. Yeah. And I hit my head. There was a big hematoma here. Overnight, it sunk down there, which was a surprise to me. I got up the next morning. I brushed my teeth. I started the coffee. I hadn't looked in a mirror. It was had 30 minutes before I walked past a mirror. I looked in, and I thought, oh, my God, what happened to me? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, well, I my, my, my hat's off to you. There we go. My hat's <laughs> off to you because uh, any other woman, because of vanity, would not appear with me today. To oh, do come this. on. It's just a black eye, you know? It's just a black eye. Oh, you know? boy. And don't you feel terrible when you fall? Because being older, they all come rushing to you like, can we help you up? Oh, well, man. If a little kid fell, I'd go rushing to him, too. You yeah, know? yeah, I guess. But uh, it, it doesn't matter about the age. And, it, and I really was surrounded by all kinds of people that all wanted to help. Yeah. And, uh, and all you, after it stops really, really hurting all you want is to stand up but nobody wants you to stand up <laughs> so anyway i survived i got home and this happened and that's you know wow. better than two broken arms let me tell you yeah yep 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 i guess it is uh but geez i mean come on you know so how's your health how how you doing how, how, well, what? I figured out something. It takes a long time, you know? Yeah. Every two weeks I have chemo on a Thursday. Mm -hmm. And then I wear a body pack for a day and a half after that that pumps more chemo into me. Mm -hmm. And uh, and then I get a day or two when I feel pretty much okay with very, very minor uh, side effects. Not worth talking about. Um, and then the fatigue hits for two or three days. And during that time, I realized this time I get really depressed. I think, why am I doing this? Let's just stop it. Because um, I feel just, I, I, you know, I have to nap twice a day for two hours for those two days. And, uh, and then this morning, it's as usual, Tuesday morning, um, I wake up and I feel fine. I mean, if not like I was, you know, before cancer, I certainly feel good. I can get up. I can go places. I can do things, um, and uh, and then I feel fine until, you know, a couple of days after the next chemo. So as long as it's down to three days, maybe three and a half days that I don't feel good, um, out of fourteen, that, um, that's okay. Yeah, that's okay. I can live with that for now. Yeah, yeah. And and so what? And what did they? And you you got a good report on your last uh, your last uh, CT scan, right? Yes. Yeah. So, you know, we'll wait. In two months, they'll do another one, and we'll see what's happened. But in between, uh, what I am is both, I think, both from the chemo and the cancer, I operate in general, overall, at half speed nowadays. Mm -hmm. um, that it takes me about twice as long to do everything I used to do. Uh, a lot faster. One friend here in Oregon said, oh, Ronnie, you just finally slowed down to Oregon speed from New York. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, uh, so I, I have to learn to live with that. Mm -hmm. And then I have to stop and rest sometime when, you know, you're changing the bed maybe halfway through. I have to stop and rest. That seems to take a lot of energy these days. That sort of thing. Yeah. And, and people... 
a lot of people tell me I should get somebody to clean house for me. Um, it's very expensive here compared to where I've lived before. And, um, and so far I can do it. It just takes me longer. So it's okay. Yeah. How much does it cost to get your house clean? Uh, clean is a cleaning woman to come in. Um, you know, I don't remember. I checked on it a few months ago and it was higher than I wanted to pay. Cause every two weeks we pay a woman, I think it's 120, $140 to come in and mm -hmm. clean. Which I don't consider unreasonable, mainly because uh, I am. Uh, um, I don't consider it unreasonable because when somebody's cleaning up my mess, I feel they should be compensated well for it. You know. Okay. <laughs> All right. I've always felt uncomfortable about somebody cleaning up my house. Actually, I always felt very uncomfortable about that. You know, the only reason we have a cleaning woman in here every two weeks is because Marjorie was used to that. So that's why we do it. Otherwise, I just clean the house myself, you know. You know, we do what we do best as we can. And things, um, I think you get older, even if you don't have cancer, I think just getting older slows you down. Yeah, yeah. And, um, and the thing is that, you know, I lose two full days a month just being at the cancer clinic all day. Mm -hmm. Then I lose those three or four days twice a month when I don't feel good after the chemo. Um, and other than that, I'm slow. So um, it's I, it's it's okay. Give I mean it's it's what it is. You know, it's I think that getting cancer, um, you know, it's a crapshoot. Some people do, some people don't. Yeah. Um, it is what it is, and I've chosen to deal with it this way with this chemo for now. That will change whenever I feel I need to change that or stop it. Mm -hmm. Right now, it's just, you know, I've come to see it. I think I haven't, I haven't thought this through completely. So this is an unformed thought, if you will. Um, but I think that as long as you're lucky enough to be in my condition, which is, except for the chemo side effects for a few days, I feel fine. I don't have any yet any cancer uh effects uh and i i've had no pain i'm knocking wood while i say that um and i think that having a disease whether it's terminal like mine or a chronic disease that many people have in old age it's it's it comes with the territory it's part of living fold it into your life and move on do the do the best with the things that you can do and enjoy them yeah <laughs> yeah so that's about where i am these days um, so subject to change over time. <laughs> okay. Well, you know, uh, we always want that update. And by the way, if you've just joined us, number one, she's, she's out of sync. Don't worry about that. That's just Skype fucking up. And, uh, and the black eye is uh, because she slipped and fell and that, that was it plain and simple, you know? Yes. But what's a better story if I, if somebody hit me and I hit him back, isn't it? Did they, it happened at a hospital, so did doctors rush Not out to help you? at a hospital, at a medical center building. Medical center, okay, so did doctors come out to help you? No, they don't, <laughs> by the way, no, they don't. Oh, jeez. It's all EMT. There are only several hundred doctors in that building, but they're busy doing other things, so the EMTs come and take you to a hospital But yeah, But want. you would think also the facility would care about legal action, you know, so they would want to make sure you were taken care of well. Well, the, the police assigned to that place were there, mm -hmm. and they everybody was very helpful and very nice. They checked my eyes, you know, the EMTs, that they're focusing properly, and we made sure that there were no broken bones and I wasn't bleeding anywhere. And um, there you go. I'll I tell you what happened. I, I fell on Broadway a couple of weeks ago. Took a real buster, as they call it. And I, I fell down, and... Uh, all of a sudden, people come running over to me. Oh, let's help you. You know, it's like the old man fell. <laughs> okay, I felt I like they were all looking at me like I was I the disagree. old guy. I think if a little kid fell, people would rush over just as fast. It's yeah, not I, about being an old man, it's about falling. Okay, but let's say a 20 year old. Yeah, people are gonna rush over uh, to that too. I don't think Anybody so. Anybody who falls, I don't think people so. go help. Well, all I know is I felt embarrassed, you know. Well, so did I. I mean, you you just when you're not on your when you're not on your feet, and when you fall down, you just feel foolish, you know. Yeah. Even if you couldn't help it. Yeah. 
Um, so anyway, uh, let, let, what are your uh, what are your uh, readers to your blog talking about these days? Is there is there some predominant discussion that's important to them? They talk about whatever I write about, mm-hmm. um, and uh, and they're very good at it. I mean, I have great readers and and very thoughtful people and funny people if that's called for. Mm-hmm. So it just it depends. Uh, the more <coughs> <clears throat> Excuse me. That's part of of <clears throat> this whole thing too. Yeah. Um, so if I'm writing about, of uh, oh, the other day I wrote about being a professional patient, mm-hmm. and of course the old people who read my blog, they have a lot of experience with that too. So they plugged in a lot of information from their half. The thing that seems to be universal about being a professional patient is we all despise counting out our pills into those little plastic boxes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Yes. <laughs> you know, and I've been I've been thinking, why doesn't somebody invent something where, like, you throw all your pills into it, or you throw them in one at a time, and then it just dispenses them to the little oh, thing. Oh, they have that. You they, can buy them now. It costs more, of course. And it comes, you know, let's say a month's supply in a box. Mm-hmm. But your morning and your evening and maybe noon, if you have them, come in a little packet. Oh, oh, so that, that, oh yeah. They count it out for you. Yeah, they do that for you. But I'm talking about a device, right? Because right now we have to take these pill boxes or just you, you have 30 days there and then you put one of each in 30 it. 30 days? Mine has seven. Really? I have the 30-day one. Wow, okay. Yeah, uh, they're more expensive than the seven-day ones. <laughs> Uh, and and I and I uh, put one pill in each one, and then I do the next pill, and I do the next pill, and I do the next pill, and then I'm through. I close all the little lids, and I've got a month's worth done. But it would be so much nicer if all I had to do was like pour thirty pills into 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 a funnel, and it just boom, 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 and then the next one. Boom, 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 boom. And I'm trying to think of if any of you out there are inventors. Here's the idea. Okay, run with it. But it already comes from your pharmacy in the little packets, you know. Yeah, yeah, they and do. And people always recommend that to me. But um, first of all, it's more expensive. Drugs are expensive enough. And um, and I can still count. I haven't lost that faculty yet. And um, and it's just annoying. It's, it's not like it's a big deal. It's annoying. And the funny, and because, you know, how fast time goes when you get yeah. old, yeah. I usually do it on Saturday. And then next thing I know, I'm doing it again, and it feels like I did it yesterday. You know, well, like a week didn't go by. I just, right. Ugh. Yeah. So, uh, but I mean, uh, the fact is that, I, for instance, I have, um, uh, through my union plan, a drug plan that sends me, that sells me 30, uh, 90 days worth at a time. You have to buy 90 days worth at a time. It's much cheaper, by the way. Uh, in fact, I'm paying as much for three months as I used to pay for one month. Okay, uh, but anyway, uh, so I is get. This, stop a minute! Is this some old people's conversation? Absolutely, or what? <laughs> and fuck them, fuck them, fuck them if they don't want us talking old people talk. So uh, anyway, I get I get three months worth. Okay, and I'm just up to the up to my ass in these pill bottles. You know, of thirty pills each in the bottles. And uh, it's it's like it's huge. You, I take home this big valise full of pills <laughs> every month, every three months. So you I know. have big pill bottles. You know the the brown pill bottles. Oh yeah. And I buy more than one month's worth. They they give me a much bigger bottle. I never yeah. saw such big pill bottles before. Yeah, but anyway. So I mean, what happened was they put us on this thing uh, with I can't remember the name of the company now. Where, where you have to order three months at a time, which is fine, you know. I, I, I thought it was gonna cost three times as much and it only costs uh, the same as it was costing me before for one month, so I'm, I'm, I'm happy. I would whisper that if I were you. What? I would whisper that piece of knowledge if I were you. Don't let anybody know. What do you mean? Companies it's, it's, will raise the prices that you're doing. No, what happens is there are quite a few plans like this that people have where they can subscribe to three months, and it does, they do cut down on the price. You know what? You know what? Whisper this. What, don't give them any ideas. What used to amaze me was I used to take a, uh, 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 not an antidepressant, it was a mood elevator or whatever, called Zoloft. And it used to cost me X number of dollars for the five milligrams or something. I'm just 
throwing out a number here. I don't remember what the number was. It was a pill. Let it go at that. And my doctor said, well, let me prescribe the tens for you. And I said, why? He said, because they don't cost any more than the fives, and then you can break them in half and oh, get so the daily dosage. As many as yeah, this yeah. And, and that was the thing I could never understand. If you go and let's say you're supposed to get five grams or something, and instead you buy the 20 grams or something, the price either isn't that much more or is exactly the same. That's the one I could never figure out. Well, I don't know what to tell you. That and the great mis the, my great Hertz mystery, which is uh, why is it if I want to rent a car for three days, does it cost me seven hundred dollars? But if I want to rent it for a week, it's only three hundred and twenty-five. And hey, <laughs> your answer is right there. Go for the week. <laughs> well, yeah, but then what do I do with the car for a week? I don't want to park it in New York City. You kidding me? You know. So it, it uh, I just got to figure out if I need three days, I should just take a week and go somewhere for a week, you know. Yes. But uh, I mean, the, but that that doesn't make sense. You used to make didn't used to make sense that when you flew across the United this doesn't hold true anymore. But you used to fly across the United States, and you were going to just stay on the other end. Like I was moving there, I had to buy a round trip ticket because it was cheaper than buying a one way ticket. These are the mysteries of life that... You well, know, I've given up on those kinds of mysteries of life in my condition. Yeah. just I just go with the flow now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But <laughs> um, um, so they say, you're, they say at least your, your, your cancer is slowing down, and that's good. That's what the chemo is supposed to do is slow the growth. Yeah. And that's what the last CT scan showed. Mm -hmm. So that's where we are, and in another... Mm -hmm. Oh, I don't know. I think it's six weeks, five or six weeks they'll do uh, the next scan, and we'll see if it's still doing what it's supposed to do. Now, I imagine your 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 readers are uh, to her blog, which is timegoesby.net, uh, are probably very concerned about, you know, about Medicare and about health plans and things like that, because when you get to be at our age, you know, you sit down at dinner with a bunch of older people now, and you sit at the table, how are you doing? Well, I went to the doctor, I've got blah, 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 and blah, blah, blah. And then it eventually gets to how much are you paying for your medical care? You know, you've got Medicare, but you got that other dreaded 20% that Medicare doesn't pay for. Yes, you know. but the, most people buy a supplemental policy to yeah. cover that. Yeah, but the supplemental policies are not cheap. You know, I mean, uh, here uh, cheaper than what it's cost to treat me for the last eighteen. Well, months. that's true. They lost Much the cheaper. they lost the bet with you. You know, yes, they did. because that's yes. all it is. It's a bet on the part of the uh, of the uh, Some medical. People hardly ever use there uh, until now. I never used. I hardly ever used my medical coverage. I was healthy. Yeah. All my life. Yeah. So. Um, but I'm making up for it now. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, um, yeah, and and I have to, you know, whenever we talk about this, I have to talk about the people who treat me, from you know the surgeons on down to the people who say hi and check you in when you arrive for an appointment. Is that where I go at OHSU? Every person there is smart, caring, concerned, good at their jobs, just fantastic people. Yeah, as I've said over and over and over again, as far as I can tell. Not one of them ever has a bad day. Now, we know that's not true. Everybody has a bad day, but they never show the patients. Yeah. And they're just amazing people. And uh, I think they're different. People who are caregivers are different from you and me. And they're amazing people. Caregiving is a skill, you know? It, it, I think it's more than that. I think it involves a lot of empathy. Well, that, that that's part of the skill. I mean, you 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 you. Know, you well, I don't I don't think you learn empathy like that in the same way you learn how to do a, a put a bandage well, on. Well, from the get go, I think you have to be a very special kind of person to want to go into that line of work, because mm -hmm. it's a constant case of depression. You know, I mean, when you. But it's not. It's not. They, I talked to some of the people, the nurses and other people about this, mm -hmm. and they get a great deal of pleasure out of helping us. Yeah. It's um. It, it yeah, but I'm saying it takes a special. Let me put it this way: Could you do it? I couldn't. No. no. You know. 
And, and, and it's not to say I don't have empathy, but I think that if I were dealing every day with people who were dying, mm -hmm. I think I would have a hard time dealing with that. You know? um, but that's you know, me. You, you don't become friends with these people, but you become friendly. Mm -hmm. And you get to know them. You might know about their kids. You, know, you talk about books you read while they're doing whatever they have to do that day with you. And, and so it's more than just you know, somebody, some anonymous person putting a bandage on your finger. You know, it's it's much more than that. And they remember your name and um, and you joke around and um, and and it's it's almost although you're not there every day, it's almost like people you work with mm -hmm. at your job is that they're the, they become that kind of friend. And, uh, and it must be difficult. They don't talk about it. I've never asked either. Yeah. But it, but you're right. It must be difficult. It, it, it's very special. Very special. Hey, well, listen, we've run out of time. And I just want to tell everybody, if you minded the fact that Ronnie was out of sync today, just think of this as a badly dubbed foreign film. <laughs> okay. <laughs> hey. Okay. Take care, and we'll see you in a couple of weeks, okay? And hope that we get you in better sync. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, Ronnie too. Ben. Celebrating four years of talk like you've never heard it before, this is Gap, the Great American Broadcast Network. And I don't even know what happened at the end there. I, it just... You know, that, that was because I, I have this uh, this thing that switches uh, the program, and then when I'm doing her, it records her, and uh, they upgraded the program, and it was all fucked up. Everything I was doing was fucked up, but now I've got it all tuned up, and we should be doing okay, and uh, uh, it's not eating up a lot of resources and all of that, so... I guess we'll just hope that it's going to be okay. All right, let me uh, let me see here. Let me open up the Skype lines. That takes a little bit of doing here. Well, it takes a couple of mouse moves. And uh, the lines are now uh, open. Yes, they are open. Uh, so if you want to call, uh, here we are, folks, uh, ready and, and, and ready to talk to you about uh, all the things that you might want to talk about. Big day today, news-wise, I guess, um, and that it was great because President Trump was upstaged by Michael Cohn. Here he is in uh, South Korea, and hardly anybody is reporting about it. Ah, here comes Richard Johnson is our first caller tonight, and Richard. Oops, wait a minute. What? Why did Why did that yeah, call? I'm here. I'm here. Yeah, I know. Okay, you're fine. Okay. What, what? What? Why oh. is this? Uh, why is this? Uh, uh, wait a minute! Somebody's trying to call me, call Esther Curtis, but you're calling me on the wrong line, Esther. Uh, 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 just hold on a second, folks. Yeah, it's no problem. Yeah, yeah. Go on. Uh, listen to this. Out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and there's no, no way for me to hang up on it either. What it's doing? What you're doing is calling my other line. Uh, oh. Something which is? Uh, it's not even. I'm not even online with it. Damn it. And, and you're waking up my wife, too. Now, wait a minute. Hold on a second. <laughs> Esther, go away. Just go away. I don't want to talk to you. Okay? <laughs> oh, boy. See, and what's happening is my, uh, my wife is trying to sleep in the other room, and it also goes off on all our echoes. And so she probably is wondering what was going on there. You know, oh, yeah. <laughs> so anyway, let me see here. Let me let me uh, uh, go over to our citizen panel. Uh, there they are already. Richard uh, is in uh, Copenhagen or near Copenhagen. Uh, uh, he's in. Yeah, he's near, in Oslo. Yeah, we, we uh, he, he's near Oslo. Yeah. He's somewhere. He's in. Uh, yeah, he, near, he, near. Scan, you, Scandinavia. You know, Scandinavia. You know what happened uh, what? the other night when you were trying to call in? Uh, I said, "Oh, that's the guy from Thailand." Um, and yeah, um, Alan, and yeah, and yeah, you and Alex said, "Oh no, he's the guy from Copenhagen." Yeah, so we, I, yeah, I heard so you've that. earned. You're in Copenhagen. Now. Yeah, whether you like it or not, <laughs> you're in Copenhagen. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. But uh, feel, feel you, right? So. Yeah. But now uh, you had a lot of trouble I'm getting in, right. and, yeah, and, yeah, and yeah, I know. yeah, yeah. You had a lot of trouble getting in, and now you don't have any trouble getting in. Oh no, no, you see, uh, it's it's uh, 
it's uh, <clears throat> I just uh, 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 double clicked the uh, Skype logo mm -hmm. on my as uh, my voice is a little uh, um, I uh, I have a slight cold so mm -hmm. it's a little yeah uh, uh, I, you I have got, an accent too huh yeah yeah, <laughs> I, mean, I, yeah I, have, I have an accent too yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. no uh, Phil we have the accent. <laughs> Well, it depends on uh, your perspective. I, I, I uh, what I did actually. Uh, uh, anyway, uh, I double, I double click on the logo. Mm -hmm. So I haven't, uh, I, I done it before, but uh, nothing seemed to happen. But all of a sudden, I got this um, menu, and uh, Gabnet, uh, and w when it was green, it was on, and I, uh, I was actually talking to. I could see all the shows. Uh, when they were on, there was a message. Mm -hmm. I could uh, call. Uh, uh, I could choose between, you know, a vi video call or, or audio call. Yeah. So, so you cl you clicked on the page on the Gabnet page. Uh, no, no, do, no. First, I clicked on the double uh, on on the Skype logo mm -hmm. on on my computer on uh, on another computer. Oh, I see. Uh, okay. But it's a PC, well, but I, it's the same logo. In, in, any, in any event, you managed to get through, which is kind of yeah, nice. Yeah. Uh, and uh, nice. it, uh, you know. <laughs> yeah. Fingers crossed. And, and tonight, it seems <laughs> yeah. so far, I, I, so far, I'm everything is working okay, except for Damien, who tried to get on tonight because he started Still? up his machine. And he wow. the, the <laughs> thing he uses to hook up to the server well, it wasn't taking his audio feed or something, and it was just he was having all kinds of trouble. So who knows if if he's on tomorrow mm -hmm. night? But we'll hope. We'll hope and pray, um, because we miss him. We miss you, Damien. If you're listening, we miss you. Uh, actually, D Damien is the, is that the guy that's after uh, the sports show? No. Uh, yeah, after the sports show. Yeah, yeah Damien yeah. or Alex. Uh, yeah. Because I was actually calling the sports show today. Oh, really? Oh. Yeah, and they, uh, did yeah, you talk? yeah, because uh, this menu, I this double click, uh, all uh, uh, like 15 minutes before they went on, uh, I got like, yeah, uh, the, this and this show will be on in like so and so, yeah. and um, I, I didn't know what this uh, show was all about, so I wrote them. and they said it's a sports show, and since I'm an old football player, I called. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Do you play oh, football good. or do you play soccer? Oh, uh, soccer. It's soccer. football, Phil. <laughs> soccer. 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 Uh, you know, I, I don't want to be rude, Richard, but I want to ask you a question because I okay. have to ask this question. All right. uh, I, I don't have any tattoos on me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> and so I always wonder, my, my <laughs> wife, by the way, does have a tattoo on her ankle. And it, says, and, and it says, ankle. and it has the name Buddy. Okay. Uh, and I, I kept saying to her, didn't you ever think that someday you were going to marry a guy named Alex? Yeah. You know, <laughs> and, and that you're uh, going to, uh, and she says, oh, I, I like having that there. Uh, but who, who's Buddy? I have no idea who Buddy is. And I'm afraid to yeah. ask. But Buddy is like Buddy is a friend. Also. Well, okay. I'm her Buddy. So, you know, what the hell? So are you considering any yeah. tattoos? Oh, no. No, 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 no. No, number one, I'm Jewish, and I want to be buried in the Jewish cemetery. <clears throat> you can't be buried in the Jewish cemetery if you have uh, tattoos. I, uh, I actually, uh, uh, we, uh, Muslims, uh, some Muslims, uh, I don't know if it goes for all of them, but I was uh, out uh, in uh, and buying some food in uh, uh, a kitchen, uh, at, at the grocery store, mm -hmm. and, and there was a guy there, uh, obviously a Muslim, and so an Arab, yeah, Arabic, guy. and he saw my tattoos, uh, and he said, uh, he, he asked me uh, why I did it, and you know, and he said I can't, uh, I said, uh, you know, the, it's uh, kind of addictive, and uh, but I started, I, I, it's. I started out many years ago, and I told him about it. So, and he said, "I'm a Muslim. I, uh, I'm not allowed to take tattoos." Yeah. So I said, "I, I, I every Muslims," and he wouldn't answer that. But well, I, the one I, on your throat hurt. 
when you huh? got the one in your throat, you know, right on your Adam's apple? Did that one hurt? No, the no. compass? No, uh, I, I, think it's... No. Uh, I took it in St. Petersburg. Uh, no, it didn't hurt at all, actually, because uh, it, the tattoo artist, he went so smoothly. He didn't, he, he didn't go like, but uh, what hurts, it's like the chest and the sides here, the, the ribs. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, so uh, be, uh, you know, like I think the real commitment to tattoos is the fact <clears throat> that you put one on your face. I have on your face. Yeah, oh, I know, but you put yeah. one on your face, uh, well, and that's that real mean? commitment. I, I have, I have on both sides. Mm. Because you can't, uh, you can't, uh, co you can't cover that up, you know. Uh, oh yes, you can. How how can you cover Makeup, it up? I guess. Oh, you can cover everything up. Oh really? How? Oh, no. With, with, yeah. with what? Oh, yeah. Makeup or? No, no, no. Another tattoo. Uh, oh, oh, another tattoo, but it have to be on your face. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I, I thought you meant cover. There's something called cover-up tattoos. I thought you meant if I didn't like him anymore, I could take another tattoo. Uh, do you mean makeup? Yeah. yeah. But you can't cover up with makeup. You can uh, cover I, it up with makeup. No, I haven't tried it. I don't know. Yeah, Maybe. but if How you let's say you let's say you wanted to get rid of that tattoo, how do you get rid of it? Uh laser. Laser? And that's very expensive though, isn't it? Uh <clears throat> it's about the same uh price as a tattoo, but I uh as uh I know uh, uh I'm kind of in, uh I haven't uh, uh uh, uh, paid as man as as much for my tattoos as a normal guy, yeah. Because I I'm, I I've been in the uh, tattoo community and conventions and fr I have friends and we like that. If we are at parties, we, I we we will go like, uh, hey, let's tattoo a little bit. And I will go, okay. Now uh, let me just ask yeah. you this. Let me ask you this. What is it about tattooing about getting tattoos that you find addictive? <laughs> uh, uh, I, um, it's addictive. Be, uh, uh, first of all, I started out with one tattoo, of uh, uh, of course. Mm -hmm. uh, and I was what was what was your first tattoo? Uh, uh, it, my first tattoo was, uh, yeah. Do you, uh, wait a minute. My, um, okay. You, I can't stand up. You have what's called a sleeve do you, there. Do you see the star there? Yeah, that was yeah. it. That was my first tattoo, the little that star. Yeah. Uh, no, not 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 nothing wrong. Only the star and a banner mm -hmm. underneath. But and, but, uh, now, but now you've turned it into an entire sleeve. <coughs> no, uh, no, no. Uh, only only uh, oh. a half sleeve. Oh, okay. Uh, well, because yeah, because uh, on warm here. days you like to feel cool, right? So. Huh? <laughs> on warm days, no, you no, like no, to no. feel cool. Uh, 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 it's a tribute to um, uh, my style. Uh, there's different style. My style is old school, what they call old well, school. Well, I had style. a friend, guy I knew in New York who was probably the world's, one of the world's <laughs> most famous tattoo artists, Spider Webb. Yeah, I know that. Yeah. I know that. Name. And yeah. Sp Spider, well, he could only do it in uh, uh, outside of New York, up in Yonkers. Because New York City, for years, would not allow oh, tattoo oh, parlors. Oh, oh, all the way out of the Yonkers? Yeah, yeah. Well, that's not that far. It's just above the Yeah, Bronx, but he, he had to do it yeah, out of yeah, town. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And I went over one. once, and we, we actually shot him for the show I was doing, Midnight Blue, tattooing yeah. a guy's penis. Okay. And I thought that had to be the most painful thing <clears throat> I had ever seen. Oh, you know do you know there, there was a penis you know? wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. circulating wait, in the web. Wait, wait a minute, Richard's trying to yeah. say something here. Yeah, I, I, do you know what, uh, what what he tattooed on his penis? I don't know. Maybe like, another penis. I don't know. I, <laughs> I have no no idea. <laughs> if I if I had a tattoo put on my penis, I would have it just say uh, "world's greatest" or uh, just yeah, "penis" yeah. would be nice. Just you know. Yeah. The stupidest, uh, I say, I, I've seen uh, some penis tattoos uh, throughout the years. Uh, the and, first, uh, I'll tell you, the first, the first person I ever knew that had a major tattoo was this woman who had across her pubic yeah. region, uh, just yeah. pu pubic line. Insert here? Uh, uh, no, here. no. Yeah. Uh, Picasso's signature. 
Lot like over here. Yeah, it was Picasso's signature. She says, I have the only vagina signed by Picasso. Oh, the, <laughs> oh, the Picasso. Uh, yeah. But, <clears throat> I've seen, uh, I, I got two, uh, the two most ridiculous uh, penis tattoos I ever seen. I think one of them was uh, the <laughs> one guy, he, he tattooed uh, Arma Armani, the mm -hmm. logo, the Armani logo. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah. Armani. Armani. Yeah, expensive, expensive dick or something. I don't know. <laughs> the mo and the most stupid one. Uh, uh, that's not that long ago. He, he had tattooed the Superman logo on his penis. Yeah, you know a lot of things you could put on your penis if you wanted to, but Superman the, logo. The one I would I, want. Yeah. I, you I know what I would want is something that was one thing when I was flaccid, and when I had an erection, became yeah. something else. Uh, health belts? It, no. It, 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 in other words, uh, it, when I'm flaccid, it would be yeah, a certain, yeah. you know, tattoo. And then when I had an erection, oh, it yeah, would it stretch would be, uh, and turn into something else. Of course. Yeah. I mean, I would. I would do that. That would be. That would be cool. Well, gee, I finally uh, found a uh, tattoo I might want if I could still get an oh, erection. Yes. So uh, yeah. uh, ask me what, what I have. Uh, ask me what kind of tattoo I have on my penis, though. Oh, do you have a tattoo on your penis? <laughs> do you? Uh, everybody asks me that, but um, I usually say no. You, wait a minute, you usually say no. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, it means sometimes, sometimes you do have a tattoo on your penis and sometimes no, you don't? No, the, the closest thing, no, no, I don't. Uh, but I have on my ass. Uh, 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 on, my, uh, on, my, uh, on my ass. What, and on what, my, what is that tattoo? Uh, I have, <clears throat> I have uh, two eyes like uh, 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 Alice Cooper eyes, uh, make make up with the, those you know uh, lines mm -hmm. above it. Yeah. Uh, and I made it uh, ah in Thailand this time when I call yeah. you there uh, uh, in Thailand. Mm. Uh, whenever <clears throat> when uh, the heat in Thailand does that that, that the tattoo grows faster. Than, than than normally in mm -hmm. uh, Norway, for example. Yeah. In, in Norway, they recommend like two to three weeks, and then t before you take another one, if you want another one. Yeah. But I I I, I took uh, I have a record like uh, fifteen tattoos in a week. Jeez Almighty. Uh, yeah, because uh, when I'm in Bangkok, I'm like. Uh, doing my what uh, you know my regular routine so whatever mm -hmm. and then if I'm bored I, mm -hmm. I, I I go to the tattoo studio yeah so I mean are you married or are you single <clears throat> uh, no I'm not single I'm uh, I'm not married I'm uh, living with a girl and we've been living for together for 14 years oh okay well I was gonna ask you uh, how she how she likes that but uh, she, she's born in Thailand that's uh, <laughs> But yeah, I'm in Thailand three, three, four months a year. Oh, I see. Okay. And, uh, and what does she tattoo. think? What does she think of the tattoos? Uh, well, uh, she, you know, uh, that's that's her. her. Yeah. So go go a little closer. Helps. Show that again, and go closer to the camera so people can that, see that. That helps. No, no, <laughs> it, no get her. Okay. Uh, it, there, uh, there we go. See? Yeah, oh, it. there she is. Uh, can you see it? Yeah. 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 Huh? Wow. Well, now you see that's commitment. <laughs> yep. Uh, it's on the right side because I didn't have place uh, on 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 the on on the heart side. You know, I, I, if if I had, I would take it above my heart. Nice. Oh, isn't that and, sweet? Know, is, yes, that's maybe. commitment and being sweet at the same time. Uh we we've been uh, yeah we we've been uh, we've been we uh, we are a very happy couple. Wow. Uh, How many? And she does she does not. Uh, She's not a tattoo fan or anything, but she don't. She's not. She says uh, it's my do what you want, but I don't think uh, she would like uh, a penis tattoo, for example. I, yeah. I won't. I won't do that. Yeah. But uh, except from or or in in my face a lot, a yeah. lot of. You yeah. just you just have what a little bit here that you want. Yeah, but yeah. that's that's because uh, this means something. These two. What do they mean? Well, everything means something. Yeah. But, uh, that that's a that's a long story. You know. Yeah. Uh, uh, it's my 
uh, uh, I used to be a football player, and uh, after that, I was uh, into. Uh, I, I, now, do you, I, when you say football, do you mean soccer? Soccer. soccer. Okay, yeah. that's what I figured. Uh, that, yeah. that I got, <clears throat> I got injured. Yeah. So I had to train uh, like uh, uh, alternative. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I start training weights. And then uh, a guy get, uh, started me, uh, getting me into boxing. So I uh, fought some matches and I lost and I learned. Mm -hmm. And uh, I fought, uh, that's my two knockouts. One diamond. Oh, okay. Fought. All right. Yeah, and I have three, uh, also three, you can see three dots there. Yeah. And I have three dots. Uh, wait a minute. On, let's see. Uh, can yeah. You see? Yeah. 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 Uh, each dot is um, uh, when you cross the equator, you get one. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. And yeah. when you get and when you get around Cape uh, Cape Good Hope. Yeah. That one. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> and then, and then, if you cross the equator, to, if you had to cross the equator twice, you wow. get two more. I just and, get my passport stamp. Yeah, that. Me too. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. But, uh, I, uh, yeah. It's good it, enough for me. But I was on yeah. the boat. Well, all I can think of is Lydia, Lydia. Have you seen Lydia? <laughs> Lydia, the tattooed lady. <laughs> Well, he said he was on a boat. I noticed that, you know, you've got the uh, anchor and you've got yeah. the uh, 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 the compass star. Uh, God damn uh, it. You are I just inked, too. Oh, look you, at that. You are yeah, all works. inked up. Mm. Nice, huh? Yeah. You don't go for little stuff, either. Good, good, good uh, work. Yeah. 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 Do you have one particular artist you use? Uh, I, I used to have uh, two. Yeah. Uh, uh, but then I moved and uh, but I met uh, he. Uh, yeah. And he had a couple of um, guest guest artists. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, I got to meet uh, a Bolivian guy. Mm -hmm. So I he he <clears throat> he's done a lot. But uh, after that, like after uh, I, I started tattooing in like 2004 right. or three. But after like after I after like two thousand and six seven, mm -hmm. I I start I I went on a boat and then uh, you know a lot of always traveling and then after that I had all uh, I don't I I don't, uh, I had a tattoo artist Richard, in every, in every. Were you on a tall ship? Is that uh you know that kind of ship? Was that the yeah kind yeah of ship? yeah yes yes. Is that a what, do they call those tall ships or? Uh, yeah, they call it tall ships. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Or, uh, how, how old? How old are you, Richard? Forty. Because you've lived a lot of life for forty. Yeah, forty years. I wow. can tell you a lot of crazy stories that won't be uh, that you won't believe. Yeah. Wow. Uh, uh, about uh, uh, when I <clears throat> when I was twenty six, I was uh, feeling like fifty. Okay. Well, and that and that includes, uh, you know, uh, I mean, uh, uh, okay, 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 I can say one thing. Uh, I don't know about you guys, but doesn't every guy or a boy, when you're like 16, 17, dream of uh, uh, having sex with two, two or two <laughs> girls at a time? Two girl, two women at a t at a time. Yeah, yeah two women at a time. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. I, 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 my debut was with uh, two, and then on, at the same night, three more. When you, that was your first time? <laughs> he, no, I was, the I was only six. way you could do that is be 16. <laughs> the yeah. only time, the only time, uh, I, the only time I had two at a uh, time a that I remember. I have to tell the age of the women. Yeah. Because I was 16. Yeah. And they were uh, like 32, 33. Wow. That's a reasonable age difference. Hmm. Yeah, I think so too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I. Uh, I the only time I think. Uh, uh, yeah, I only once did I actually have uh, two women at the same time, and they were both sisters. Oh, oh really? Oh wow, that's the oh, key. Oh, really? yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh. And I still remember to this day the one thing I noticed that was similar about them is they both had the same looking <laughs> vagina. Looking vagina. Yeah. 
Yeah. Okay. Their vaginas seem get... very similar. Quaaludes help with that. Good for you. Good for you, Alex. Uh, well, you, same you, genes. Uh, okay. What about uh, swingers? Have you done that? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Are you familiar uh, with Alex's Midnight Blue show? Yeah, 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 I, yeah I am a little bit. Uh, gang bang. Oh, you, you, what, what? What do you mean a gang bang? In, like, uh, like uh, you were at Plato's retreat, weren't you? I mean, uh, I mean uh, a community that gets gets together, like and have uh, a gang orgy. Bang. You mean? Yeah. Orgy well, a gang or, bang would indicate one person having sex with many people. Yeah, I, I, yeah. I mean, I mean like an orgy. An orgy. Oh well, I, 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 used to, I used to go to places like Plato's retreat and okay. places like that. Yeah, I, 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 although I always found orgies difficult for me because I. I, I preferred to go to an orgy and then take a woman over into the corner by oh, ourselves. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I didn't yeah. want to, okay. you know, I didn't want to have sex and have somebody's toe up my nose, you know? Yeah, I see, I see, I see. Yeah. Okay. But what about gay sex? Huh? Gay sex. Well, uh, once at one of these orgies, uh, I was uh, uh, having some <laughs> stuff with a woman and uh, somebody else was blowing me. Yeah. And when and I that, looked down, it was a guy. Thing. It was and, a guy. Like, yes. Well, uh, well, uh, only that? You no, know, it was a guy. He was blowing me. But it was a oh. guy, and I didn't know it was a guy, uh, but yeah. it felt oh, good. Oh. And when I looked down, it was a guy, and I went, oh, well, it okay. feels good, so should I <laughs> suddenly be repulsed by the fact that it's a guy or thankful that somebody's blowing me? <laughs> you know I mean? So, I, uh, I, uh, I actually got paid. Uh, I was, I, I have, um, uh, you know, I was injured as a soccer player and a boxing and, and after that I took a degree in uh, hotel business mm -hmm. and I worked as a barkeeper and a waiter. Mm -hmm. So, uh, <clears throat> I was working as a waiter mm -hmm. in a major, uh, hotel in, in this city and, uh, the, the guy in the bar, he was gay. Uh, the bar was right next, uh, out next, uh, like uh, close to the. Uh, mm -hmm. You you went out to uh, out of restaurant into the bar, right? Yeah. And me and him, uh, I, I uh, we had uh, sex, and after that, uh, he told uh, the whole gay community in in the city, uh, or a lot of them, about me, and uh, that I was uh, like uh, amazing. <laughs> and I didn't, I didn't know that. I didn't know that. So I once uh, closed the restaurant. Hey, what was that? I can't. Uh, I, hey. well, just one moment. My my girl is saying something. Hey. Yeah. Ah, uh, okay, okay. Yes. Uh, <clears throat> what she's, what's she saying? To take to you? out the garbage. Yeah. <laughs> she's, she's, uh, or she's, do the dishes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, um, uh, yeah, I uh, I closed the restaurant. Uh, I went to the bar to have a beer, to relax, and uh, I took a sip of the beer and put it down. And I just sat there, and I, like one minute later, I heard a voice. Um, Excuse me, uh, are you uh, are you Richard? I said, uh, yeah. Yes, I am. I am. And he just, uh, he had a, he had a rather big uh, abnormal dick. Because uh, he, he, what he did, he just moved his leg uh, apart so I could see his left leg. Mm -hmm. And alongside his left leg was a big fucking thing, you know. Yeah. Uh, he said, uh, how much? <laughs> and I, uh, I, I, I said, uh, I was thinking a little bit and the bartender just like, did that like that to me, no, uh, mm -hmm. blink, blinked his eye. Mm -hmm. And I said, uh, and, and, and he said, uh, uh, of course, everything included drinks, food, everything you want is on my room. Uh, I'm a salesman, I'm a traveler and it's no problem. <laughs> I have money. Okay, I said uh, seven thousand, and I stayed. Wait a minute, seven thousand what? 
Norwegian call uh, seven hundred dollars. Oh. Seven hundred dollars. Oh, seven hundred dollars in our money. Yeah. Okay. Or uh, and then I would spend like uh, the night with. I would sleep with him or uh, over. I would sleep over. At, uh, so you did it. <clears throat> I did it, and then after that, several guys. Uh, <laughs> okay. okay. So I I did it for about uh, I did it at least for a year and it was like I mean I earned a lot of extra money on it. But now my question is: Were you bisexual, or did you just oh, say, uh, "Hey, there's money in this. I don't mind it. I'll do it." I uh, I uh, I thought I was early, uh, bisexual at the po at the point at the mo at the moment at mm -hmm. that time. Yeah. Because I uh, I didn't mind I I didn't feel yeah, I, right. I felt some kind of a, yeah uh, you know a pleasure. I turned but, a, I I actually turned a trick once. I had a woman I knew who worked in a they used to have these apartments <clears throat> where they would advertise in the paper and whatever, and people would come over and have sex at these places with the women. Mm -hmm. Okay, and I knew one of the women there, and she said to me, Can you, would you like to do me a favor? I said, what? She says, I have this guy who comes to see me all the time, and he's bringing his wife to New York, and he wants <coughs> to allow his wife to have the experience that I have when, I come, when he comes to New York. Would you like to couple up with me and turn a trick with this couple? And now I had never been put in that position. And I figured this has got to be interesting, you know, because yeah, yeah. And, and and so I said yes, and I was I was very happy with my performance. But the one thing I noticed was, to begin with, it was an entirely different kind of sex because at no point was it important for me to get pleasure. It yeah, was important and, and, for me to give them pleasure. Yeah, sure. Yeah, and and right. give the woman pleasure. And mm. but I I I I, I think I. Performed did, admirably, did you, and that's the only time frame, I ever. I was, did, did, huh? you, did you frame that first five dollar bill? Yeah, right. No, actually, I I I think I, I, I think I got a hundred dollars. I got half of what she got. I got a hundred dollars. That was the only time I ever turned a trick. Uh, you know. Uh, not, uh, can I tell another one? Yeah, yeah, quickly, and then let's get to some other stuff here. Okay. Okay. Uh, I'm not. I'm telling you all. I'm telling you all the stories I told you now is is the nicest ones. Uh, I mean the cleanest ones. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, Did you ever get in a situation that uh, mm -hmm. you were afraid or uh, were uh, in fear of uh, being uh, hurt? Uh, not really, but I was uh, uh, a few times with uh, a female prostitute and me. Mm -hmm. She asked me to, to to because there was a guy that enjoyed looking at. Us. The voyeur, and I was I was uh, also um, uh, changing uh, outfits uh, from leather to different kind of things, mm -hmm. but uh, I never felt no I never felt uh, I'm, I'm, maybe I was lucky I'm, I'm not I never felt any I was never afraid, but um, I was working uh, after that I was working in a bar, and. Uh, one, uh, it happened to me three times, but I'm only going to tell you about the one time. Yeah. And uh, uh, it was a woman, and she sat by the bar. She was, uh, this was a bar who had like regular customers, regular mm -hmm. guests. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was a Saturday, and then usually we, we had uh, a, a lot of other t people too. So this girl, uh, now a woman, she was like, uh, uh, she didn't say her age, but I would say 50 or something. Mm -hmm. uh, 50, more, maybe a little bit more. And um, I was a barkeeper and I served her and she uh, drank uh, a beer after beer and after the third beer, she smiled a little bit. And uh, I didn't get any <clears throat> sense that she was out or something. But all of a sudden, I was out ha uh, having a cigarette. Uh, we were two at uh, two bar. Uh, anyway, it ended. <clears throat> she was getting drunk, and she I was uh, closing the bar, and she refused to leave the bar before I was 
having sex with her uh, first, if, uh, and then she will leave. If not, she will, she and she actually she she locked herself like that to to a table. So I and uh, you think there's nothing to do on those snow days in Norway? Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but, yeah. <laughs> It, it this was it, this was summertime. Yeah, it's it's always a snow day in Norway, yeah. right? Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> anyway, uh, uh, okay. Thank you, Alex, for sharing. Uh, this uh, well, thank you, <laughs> thank you for sharing, and and you know you nope. can show some my, more tattoos my, my, later. My uh, pleasure. <laughs> uh, so anyway, anyway, uh, let me see here. Where do we where do we begin? I wish we had more people right now because. Uh, uh, we could sure use uh, the. Uh... Just a little thing. Sorry, can, uh, when I cough, is, is, is yeah. can you hear? Is it? Yeah, I can uh, hear. We can hear you cough, but it's not terrible. So because if it I gets... have a cough, I, I can mute if you if, want. If you want to mute when you got a cough, do it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay. yeah that'd be good. How are you doing tonight, Jeff? Good. Good. I'm not coughing. You don't have any exciting <laughs> stories like uh, like Richard had to tell. No, you? nothing that uh, crazy. I've had some pretty weird stuff in my time. But, you know, um, I, had, I had a cuckold once, which was kind of interesting. Yeah, that's yeah. cool. That's yeah. No yeah. But anyway, uh, where were we? Um, uh, 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 um, changing the subject. Sa changing the subject. Well, I hate to get in. I hate to get into the subject of politics because really, it's you know, it's mm. just the four of us, and I would love people, more people who could join in on that. So, if you're out there and you want to call and be part of it, please give us a call. Um, I'll make it easy. You know my position. Uh, what's the next? Yeah. Episode? Okay. Well. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and well, thank you and good night, everybody. Uh, I thought it was interesting to see how uh, Michael Cohn stole the limelight from Donald Trump today, in that the press mm -hmm. wasn't covering you mean the pot that called the kettle black. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I bet you've been waiting all day to say that. Um, <laughs> uh, boy, I got a bad stomach tonight. I've been eating this chocolate, and it it's the chocolate with. Artificial sweetener, and it gives is me it that carob stuff. It gives me the trots. I shouldn't. I shouldn't do it anymore. I'm going to stop <clears> doing it because then I go on the air here, and I feel like I have to. Uh, isn't that a kind of a eating a lot of artificial things like that? Isn't that kind of a bad for you? Or for, well, for, uh, uh, I'm for 79 what? years old, Richard. No, uh, I mean for everybody. I I really don't I mean think anything's bad for me about now. You know, uh, okay. yeah, I know. Yeah, if I know anything, it might that. it might hasten the inevitability, but that's about it. You know, anyway, um, uh, our president today was in uh, in uh, in uh, Vietnam, uh, Vietnam uh, yeah. and I liked your line last night, Phil. He finally got to Vietnam, although it was thirty years late. Um, <laughs> well, now now he's a uh, Vietnam. Era veteran. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's a Vietnam vet, not era. Now, now he's Vietnam a Vietnam vet because yeah, he was there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, but he, you know, he, he, under any other circumstances, because all these news organizations sent, you know, like an anchor over there to, you know, to cover it, uh, they would have got, had wall-to-wall -wall coverage of what was going on in, uh, in, in uh, Hanoi. But... With Michael Cohn, forget mm -hmm. it. You didn't hear anything about the president in Hanoi. Oh no, I, I watched uh, uh, him having dinner with uh, Kim Jong Un. Yeah, well, that, uh, no, but that that was footage that they shot and they showed later. I'm saying that there was virtually for, I guess, the thing today lasted almost eight hours. Yeah, and mm -hmm. and uh, in those eight hours, you never heard a war. They even broke. At no. times, and they didn't even go to the, the Hanoi story, you know. Now they're they're staying at that Sofitel, and uh, uh, and then uh, Kim Jong Un said that he didn't want the American uh, news people staying in the same hotel, and they had to move them, uh, or they you know, they did move. I, them. I don't know. So about did, it. That, I been, did that I, limit I the been, uh, I, exposure? Haven't been paying. No, I don't think so. You know, I mean, people are not going to be sent to Hanoi by their news organizations to go there and say, well, I'm pissed off at Kim Jong-un, so we're just not going to report it. Oh. 
Yeah. Well, uh, I noticed at the dinner uh, they they had some conversation. Uh, then what happened was they allowed them to take a ton of pictures. And then at one point uh, they said that's enough, and they ushered them all out. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And, so. So and Kim Jong Un said, if they don't get out fast enough, I'll execute them. Yeah. <laughs> so, and uh, and Trump thought that that was being a good leader. Uh, well, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, yes, <laughs> Richard. Yeah, I I I read about uh, that uh, Hanoi meeting and Trump and uh, Kim Jong Un uh, uh, on uh, uh, Norwegian uh, uh, this uh, um, website, and it said there that uh, there was five uh, points that they agreed to do and and me and i had a friend over and we were we, we were reading it and we said if 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 that's gonna be if the, if 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 he gonna make make those real if the, if he, you know yeah uh it's uh he's done something but uh, I don't know if it's true or not. Um, I can't remember all of them. But all we know uh, is that the last time it was Richard a declaration the, the, to the end of uh, the the war, which is mostly ceremonial, but, uh, but, but it's, it was, it's, yeah, it starts yeah. a conversation. It, well, the but war the war has never uh, the the Korean War has never really ended. It was a truce, uh -huh. right. and yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and yeah. and so uh, you know to say okay, well let's just it's bring the war. Let's bring the war to an end and say the war is over. Uh, is yeah. perhaps a a positive move in the right direction. Uh, yeah. it, you know, it it's an inevitability and something Kim Jong Un can sign and it doesn't bother him because he's still got his country. You know. Do you, yeah. you know what the biggest difference between this negotiation and negotiations that have uh, taken place previously with not only Kim Jong not Kim Jong Un but his father and his grandfather? is that uh, this is a top-down negotiation where you have the leaders doing the negotiation rather than... Uh, well, they haven't uh, negotiated anything. Having, you know, and having but, other people go in, uh, talk, you know, the underlings talk, try to uh, put something together, and then the uh, leaders go in and sign the papers. So that hadn't worked for the last 65 well, years. Well, that's what they're doing now. What do you think Pompeo no, no. was doing? That? No, we have a, we've had a guy... In in uh, in Pyongyang for the last I guess six to eight weeks negotiating with them. Yeah, uh, I I think the actual no Phil Phil there is actually somebody doing the negotiating uh, that went there as a front man ahead of time to get some some kind of uh, agreement that they and supposedly he had a hard time he wouldn't uh, Kim Jong Un wouldn't even meet with him. Right, because it's a dialogue between leaders. So what it is is it's a top uh, look, look, down. Don't 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 uh, pretend theory. like 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 Donald Trump is this great leader. I got to tell you, he well, I think he he's, doing it, fun. he's not going to get he's not going to get anything done on this trip. But he's going to come back and tell you that it was a wonderful thing and we got lots of stuff. The last time he said right. that, we got nothing. Yeah, how about 15 months of no nuclear tests? How about 15 months of more nuclear fission building? Hey, you know, uh, he, the listen, guy was at he, he doesn't have to test years. it. He doesn't have to test it. He knows it blows up. What he needs is the fissionable material, and he's still making that. And he had stopped doing the test for months before. No, I don't think so. Yes, he had, Phil. Yeah. 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 Well, there hasn't been any tests, and that was one of the oh, agreements. Oh, oh, I see. Okay. Well, no tests, you know, but you can still get more fissionable material. The guy has nuclear arms. What are you going to do? The guy already has them. Well, he doesn't have and, those. He has nuclear arms, however. Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, huh? Nukes. <laughs> Nukes. Yeah, Nukes. but no, but uh, no, Phil, I got to tell you, uh, nothing came out of that. You know, it was nothing but a, we're going to we're going no, to try totally to agree to agree. Nothing came out, Phil. Why don't you admit it? I'll tell this you what guy is out. a piece of shit. A second summit came out of this, and they're still talking. You cannot expect oh, that after sixty-five years. It's of because Kim Jong Un wanted to ride his choo-choo. Now, uh, after 65 years of an adversarial relationship where uh, Obama even said that the biggest threat 
to the United States is North Korea and the nuclear arms. Uh, Donald Trump is addressing this. He's having conversation, uh-huh. and they're and, negotiating and, and he, in a and positive he, and way. He's, he's being he said that we had no more nuclear threat from North Korea, and that is bullshit. Well, because the way people were talking prior to the first summit, uh, everybody had their finger on the button. Uh, you know, and uh, Phil, that's yeah. ridiculous. Not everybody had their finger on the button. Even even North way. Korea isn't stupid <laughs> enough to think that they should fire a missile at the United States because they would be ash within 15 minutes. Well, I, I have news for okay. you. North Korea, if they got bombed with a nuclear weapon, that would be an improvement. Maybe they'd have light. You know, do you know that well, no, the joke, the joke, Phil, the joke, Phil, is they'd be bombed back to the Stone Age, which would put them five years ahead of where they are right now. <laughs> OK, yes. good joke. Okay. Well, yeah, it's just that, you know, when they look at North Korea from a satellite and they see South Korea, it's it's all lit up and, and things yeah. are happening. North Korea is black. There's only one city, uh, Nyampen, I think. Uh, that that has any uh, what ta- what did you of, call the the capital of South Korea? Pyongyang. 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 Yeah. Ping pong. Pyongyang. Pyongyang. Yeah. Kevin, uh, what do you think? I think exactly what Phil doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah, I don't know. I haven't, I haven't heard anything, but I don't expect anything to come out of it except, uh, uh, except that he's going to show off his car again, and that's about it. Yeah. By the he way, here's smoke. something that I, uh, interesting about Kim Jong Un. He smokes. Yeah. Oh yeah, they were showing all that side oh, stuff. Yeah, last yeah, night. yeah. He funny. smokes, and and here's the here's the best part. David of cigarette. He has a c- cigarette, and his ashtray which is a silver ashtray. Uh, crystal. Crystal ashtray. Yeah, is being ca- carried by his sister. Yeah. You and take he, my butt. And, you know, and, and uh, Alex, did you know that he was also one of the world's, uh, the world's uh, largest in, uh, consumer or buyer importer of Hennessy cognac? Oh, really? Yeah, I, I read that. He, he, he's one of the, uh, yeah. His people are starving and he's drinking Hennessy. Yeah. 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 And, and, and smoking, uh, the cigarettes he's smoking is, uh, yeah. stri- and this is, this is the guy dead. that Trump's going to make nice, nice with. Strick, strick well, he, he, he might be buying uh, a lot of American cigarettes. What? No, he, he buy, he, he smokes, uh, is, is Davidoff Davidoff American? What is no. it? I don't know. No, it's European. What is it? Davidoff. <laughs> I oh, never yeah, heard David of David Off is Russian, I think. No, no, it's not Russian. That's oh. Romanov. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. David yeah, Off yeah, is yeah. Swiss, I think. Swiss? Uh, I think it's Swiss. Yeah, uh, it yeah. could be English, too, because Dunhill is English. Yeah, yeah but and, da- David Off, uh, I think, yeah, you could be right about Swiss, or uh, are you sure you, it's not France? Uh, I don't know. Maybe. I don't smoke, so. Yeah. Uh, but uh, me neither uh, anymore. But uh, uh, he smokes those, and those are pre- uh, expensive. Yeah. Well, smoke away, Kim. So, did anybody yeah, hear yeah. the anybody cancer, anybody watch my cancer. anybody watch Michael Cohn's testimony today? Yeah, yeah. I, I watched all day it. long. <laughs> okay, so let's uh, let's start getting a uh, uh, an opinion of it, Kevin. Let's start with you. I, I personally thought, uh, well, I didn't know how to take it. You know, I took it up for a grain of salt. He was a, he's a convicted criminal trying to go straight. Uh, well, I guess, you know, Final he, he's sentence. Michael Cohen. He's Michael Cohen. But I thought that, that the, uh, the circus was pretty funny when you, uh, when you were watching it, it was like a tennis ball going in a tennis court. You had. The Republicans telling him he's a fucking liar, and then they go back over the, the Democrat side, and they're saying, oh, it's very nice that you're here. Uh, what else did he do? And then you go back to the Republican, Republican side, and he's, you're a fucking liar. The and then you go back to the other the side. The Republicans it's, it's, didn't ask him any questions. No, they no. could have they taken the advantage. They <clears throat> could have taken the advantage there, and they didn't They didn't use it. You they know, just to their advantage. The they, they did no defending of Trump at all, and when he, except when, to say that he was a fucking liar. And when he would try to speak, they would just filibuster him and wouldn't let yeah. him speak, which I thought yeah. was terribly rude, 
because well, when he yeah. did answer when he did answer a question, he said there was no collusion that he knew of, and that, that he knew uh, of. He yeah, said he didn't Trump know never it, specifically he asked him to lie, and uh, you know basically his testimony. No, he said uh, that he was, said that Trump was all about. Well, did you nothing. say Trump didn't didn't specifically ask him to lie? Right. He no, said he that, said uh, the quite the op. I feel you must have been Wait watching the same hearings okay, that I was. You must be he, watching. He said a, that the way Trump asks for things is he says, uh, yeah, we're not in Russia, right? Uh, you know, and so it's he asks in a way that he's not asking, but but he's Trump asking, but he's asking as an yes. Ask, OK, as an ask. OK. Right. How about how about right. signing those little checks? Well, yeah. you know, that, that there's no specific, you know, there's nothing in the memo that says cover up Stormy Daniels. It could have been he gave him 11 checks. He pays him every month thirty five thousand dollars to retain him as a lawyer. And you know, course, I that's mean, that's the, that's the that's the defense they're going to take. And they're going right. to they're say that, you know, he, he they built a company just to make that to make that uh, that that transaction happen. You know, they started that company just for that. So, you know, that's a cover up. But not necessarily. I found that Michael Cohen was trying to be honest. And even when they asked him, are you going to make a movie? He said, yeah. Are you going to try and, uh, you know, uh, write a book? Write a book? They, yeah. He said, yeah. He didn't because hide. Because his, his financial life is over. Right. It is. You know, he, and, but he's and, and, what, do and, and what does he family. have other than to write a book or to allow a movie and to be made? He's pretty much honest about he can, it. He could make he a porno hide that film. Shit. Yeah. You know, yeah, but I mean, uh, I thought uh, as uh, well. What did you think, uh, Charles, as you listened to him today? I, I thought he was credible. I, I disagree with the Republicans that kept saying we are you've lied before. Why should we believe us? Why should we believe you now? And the obvious reason is he had a reason to lie before. He was being paid by Trump to lie before. He's not being paid by Trump to lie he anymore, so he doesn't have any reason to lie. He was told by Trump not to no, lie. No, he wasn't told by Trump not no. to lie. He never said Trump said that. Trump no. simply intimated that he should say certain things, but he didn't knew tell the code. He knew the code. Don't be a rat. What does that mean? Don't be a rat. <laughs> that means don't say anything. Don't tell don't tell on me. Mm, See, well, everything that, everything that he said that's, that's was mob actual mob like. And everything that he said was yeah. was the code of the mob, mob and the way language. that yeah. they talk and the way that they work. It's the way they talk in Queens, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. And, uh, that's the way he's always been. Well, it's because yeah. Trump has always he's been a mobster. Thug. He's oh, always he's been in with the mob. I mean, why yeah. in the world <laughs> did you have Roy Cohn at a, as a lawyer unless you were a mobster? That's mm. who he represented. Hey, I mean, look what, at the way that that painting was set up. The way that that painting was sold and uh, set up. You know, up. I, mean, I, I was a straw just, man. I, I was a straw man once for a painting at a at an auction. Uh, I was dating a girl who was very isn't wealthy. The, isn't the same and, thing, Phil. And no, no. And she had me go in yeah. and bid on a yeah, on a right, painting right, 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 so that right. somebody wouldn't bid her up, uh, and uh, and then she ended up paying for it. So and did the, you did did you get on the internet and boast about it? No, there was no internet back then. It was in the seventies. Oh, okay, well, and, you know, but you get in the, the newspaper the, and boast about it. No, nothing. But, uh, you know, but, you know, I mean, you send somebody in. I mean, if Trump was bidding on it himself, don't you think somebody would have bid him up, you know, and uh, and said, oh, if Trump wants it, we'll we'll just keep bidding until he uh, and then stick him with it. And, you know, so, I mean, that was a reasonable thing. Uh, you know, I, I, I was in the same but, position. But the, how about the money the, coming from the Trump trust uh, from the Trump trust? That, that's it. Well, that's then, okay. No, it's not it. OK, Phil. How's that a charitable contribution? Because the money went to a charitable cause, wasn't it? No, a, uh, no, they, they. No, it came from. It came what, from what, a charitable what was, cause. What was the uh, What was the auction for? What were they raising money? They for? weren't raising money for they anything. The guy was selling his paintings. It was going Someone to his pocket. To buy the painting. It was going uh, to his pocket. It I, was th like, I thought it was, like thought it was a charity auction. Was, no, it wasn't it was a charity It was like the United auction. Way was paying for it. <laughs> oh, I, I thought it was a charity auction. And this guy... If they were, weren't misusing the Trump trust funds in, uh, uh, inappropriately, why did Trump finally fold the Trump trust rather than have the, uh, the, well, the city the, of New York the Bureau, sue New him. York Southern District 
yeah. uh, made them do it. Well, uh, it, but he, ha he had there, to there do were it. other art pieces of art in that auction. And uh, Trump just wanted his picture to go for the highest two price. Two pictures. Yeah. Two of, no, no. There was, there two. Was, I think was two three. of them. Two of them. Uh, but maybe there were also other things in that auction that was no, being they used didn't. To they raise bought. Money. They he told Michael Cohn to go buy the picture and to bid it up so that it would go for more than it was would Michael have gone Cone for. Was Michael Cohn the straw straw man? Yes. Uh, I, oh, okay, yeah. because I thought it was he was else told by straw. Trump go down there, bid on my painting, and drive the price up. And then, and then buy it at that driven up price so that it goes for more money than any other piece of art at that auction. Right. But then he got stuck with it. He had probably, you know, he won the he won the bid and then Trump had to reimburse him to uh, to take. No, care he of the, told him to no, buy no, no, it. No, 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 no. He paid for it out of the Trump fund. The, the, yeah. The, after the guy to bid it up. Him for anything for the picture. And then he took the picture and rather than say put it in the headquarters of the Trump trust, of which there wasn't one, it was the closet at trump tower uh they put it in mar-a-lago right and then got onto twitter and said oh look this is the painting it went for sixty thousand dollars isn't that great it was it was the greatest thing in that auction i don't think it was 60 i think it was something like 20 yeah, it was 60 was it, it was, 60 oh no it was 60 or 80 yeah it was, it was up there 60. yeah and, and he was and, boasting but he was it. asked to was, drive the he was asked to drive the uh, ask cone to drive the price up so it would sell for more than any other painting yeah, it was at probably that supposed to go for mm -hmm. 20. you know that uh that oil i bid on uh i got it for five thousand and uh, 5000 in 1977 is probably more like 50000 today, you know? The what? Yeah. I, I, that, oil. that oil painting that oil I was painting. a straw man for, yeah. uh, uh, my bid was 5000 Yeah. And, uh, you know, the 5000 in 1977, that, that's, uh, uh, yeah. That's yeah, a it's lot probably a lot more today. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. It is. yeah, but you paid for it. No, I didn't pay for it. She paid for it. Uh, yeah, she paid was, for it, yeah, but yeah. it wasn't out of it wasn't out of a charity fund. No, <laughs> so totally different. It was yeah. out of a trust fund. <laughs> uh, yes, Jeff. I was um, very surprised that everybody was talking about whether he was lying or not lying. Was he telling the truth? Is this what really happened with Trump? Who's the right guy that we? information we should get about so who you know who are the people we should call next time which just all that stuff makes sense but nobody ever and they always kind of looked at him like oh geez i'm sorry that you that you lost your job oh. and uh that you're going to prison and i'm sorry about that too but the reality is this guy must have been brought in Fifty million dollars or something on his job. Hmm. He must have brought it. The uh, the medallions that he was trying to finance <laughs> and buy for twenty million, he said were worth forty five million. Uh, you know the taxi medallions. That that's one of the things that they got him for. He, he committed some sort mm -hmm. of bank fraud, trying to. Um, uses uh, home equity line or something to... Yeah, and I noticed they were talking about that, but nobody ever said, how much did Trump pay you? At least 35000 a month. Oh, <laughs> That's what the checks were. I would have asked that question, and I can't believe... Yeah, they didn't. That's true. Yeah. I don't I don't know what they were paying him, but they sure ground him on, on, on the fact that uh, they said they kept they kept pounding in on, on the reason that he was doing this was because he was mad that he didn't get a job at the White House. Well, yeah. the the uh, other thing he the couldn't other, care less there, about that. There was this no, one. He didn't want one. He didn't want to no, the White all House. He, have no the, the, client attorney privilege. The only and, job, and with all that with all all that he was getting, who cares? Who? Why would you want a job? He didn't at the want White a job House. at the White House. He just wanted to be Trump's attorney like he had been in yeah. the past. And that's yeah, what he I was. He, and, because then he could he say he was the, the attorney for the president. How how much was his attorney client privilege worth uh after they busted him? You know, I I mean, you know, he's he's not uh, pulling anything about attorney client privilege. 
Uh, and there were a couple Phil, times you really Phil, fucked up. You know, I think he I mean, kind of fucked look, up when he said he'd turn over look, all the Look, this guy this guy's, uh, uh, has always been a shithead. For yeah, once yeah. in his life, he, he's doing something decent. I think that uh, you should praise him for he's that. He's trying to save his ass. That's what he's trying to do. No, he, he knows he can't. He said it. He doesn't think he can save his ass. Yeah, no, he, he said he's, he's just hoping that they'll go easier on him. No, no, they no, could definitely no. go harder on him if he doesn't cooperate. No, he turned around and said, and they all said that this he was not going to take... make anything any easier well, in, he this, said, in this hearing. No, he said if you offered, you know, he said he said he wouldn't take a pardon from Trump, but he did say if uh, giving his testimony would uh, lessen uh, his. Uh, uh, his prison sentence, uh, he, he would, uh, you know, he'd be happy about that. Wouldn't you? But that that's, that's not the case. But that's, that's not, not, the, not case. the case. He hasn't been promised that, that by anybody. Beginning. This is, had nothing to do no. with what what he was going through already. What I, what I loved was that one uh, goofball, that one, you know, the, the, a lot of these senators, especially the Republicans, like to show how tough they are, you know. Oh, yeah. And, 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 and the guy, the guy, that, the guy who don't? said to him, uh, I've had, I've met Donald Trump at the White House, and he's a yeah. pretty nice guy. And uh, uh, Cohn said to him, "Well, you only met him once. I spent ten years with him. Okay, <laughs> I think marched, I think I know him. Years. I think I know him better well, than they you do." Marched a black woman in uh, that she was uh, up uh, behind the senator, yeah, uh, or behind the congressman. And uh, they, she said that she had worked uh, and was hired first by Cohen uh, for the Trump organization and has been working for the Trump organization, I think, 10 years. Mm -hmm. And she said that uh, she would never work for a racist and that Donald Trump had never uh, uh, had a hint of racism in anything or any dealing that she'd oh, ever oh, observed. Shit. She that, was there that, for 10 years. That's obvious that he, he he's, uh, has a hint of racism. I thought that was well, the only well, the media media the on. Then you had that one congresswoman who said she found that shameful that that woman was dragged in front of the committee. She was to a say pawn. That. Was, yeah, she was a pawn. Uh, no more shameful than Ford, uh, Blase Ford, uh, being dragged in front of that committee. But, uh, you know. What? Uh, oh, uh, what, what about ism, Phil? Yes. Okay. Yes. I just <laughs> Enjoy to, it. Just wanted to make sure it was a to toxic. What about is that, that, that was a, I, that was a testimony. That wasn't a a, a pawn. Oh, this I, is it, a testimony also. Yeah. Yes, Richard. Yeah. I. 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 Uh, <clears throat> I, I can't. I can't have noticing that. Uh, there's always a uh, one or two, uh, one or two, maybe three. What about is them uh, on the What's show? Wrong with it? I, 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 no, no, it's nothing wrong with it. I, I kind of like it. I, yeah, me too. <laughs> well, uh, well, what I what, what I find objectionable about what about isms is they don't have anything to do really with the discussion you're having. But what they do yeah, is they sidetrack them. They sidetrack them. Yeah, yeah, I know what you mean about well, it. I, but I you just, attack. I just, Alex, you attack the, the Republicans <laughs> for doing the sort of the same thing that the Democrats did during the Kavanaugh hearings. So, you know, it, it's like whoever's in charge is it seems oh, to well, take those I think, positions. I think, That's what they I call think, the I, swamp. Well, yes, Jeff. Uh, one of the things that my wife uh, mentioned today, she goes, how come that all of these Republicans could have asked all of these questions for the last Two years. Why didn't they yeah. ask any questions themselves? Because they weren't going after Trump. You know. Well, you know, uh, you know. The, I, the I think that just just because you're a Republican doesn't. Cone. But you know, here's what I find objectionable about the Republicans right now. Just because you're a Republican doesn't mean you have to be an apologist for Trump. And they're Nobody's all they, no, they're all toadies. They're all toadies and apologists for Trump. But they're apologizing for him when he did do something. Like wrong. today, today when they had a chance to sit there and cross-examine Cone, instead they just sat there, attack, attack, attack. They never really got in any substantive issues with him. Right. They didn't and, learn anything from him hmm? uh, in their direction. Yeah, yeah Richard was hand. Yes. Uh, yeah, I yeah. I uh, uh, about Trump. I, I I have a story about Trump, uh, which I'm not sure are true or not. 
Was he in the bar with That's you? That's what I was saying. Is no, he the guy no, in the no, bar? No, no, he was not. He, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, that, he was, no, no. Uh, he, he was in um, uh, the head of NATO. It's a Norwegian guy now. Yeah. Uh, the for, a former prime minister of Norway. Mm-hmm. And um, it's it's the story goes. Uh, he he told it the the prime the Norwegian former prime minister that Trump were, went over to say hello to him, shake him shake his hand and say uh, they had met before. Mm-hmm. So uh, and and uh, Trump apparently said went over and uh, shook his hand and before. Uh, uh, the Norwegian guy, uh, minister, had, yeah. uh, said, had said something. Trump said, oh, well, uh, hello, uh, his name is Jens. Mm. So he had, he remember, hello, Jens, I, uh, it's nice to meet you. Finally, I hear you want to, I, I know, and I hear you want to, you're one of my greatest fans. And then he just, then he just, and then he just went away. He thought his name was Pence, not Jens. Oh, really? He was the vice president. <laughs> yeah, Pence, yeah. yeah. No, he wouldn't confuse somebody with the guy who sucks his dick. No. Uh, <laughs> hey, uh, you know, I know you want to talk about Cohen. I, I just didn't think there was a lot of substance there. There was one other story hmm. that uh, I'd like to talk about tonight, which was the, uh, the guy from uh, uh, Univision that was in Venezuela and got uh, and he got arrested uh, by Maduro's uh, guards, and they took you know all their phones and the video because they filmed uh, the uh, people in Venezuela eating out of a garbage truck trying to get yeah. food. And uh, then there was some stories about uh, they uh, they couldn't afford uh, medicine. That uh, a boy died because he couldn't get antibiotics and. Uh, that some other medicine was going to be 30 bucks and uh, people only make five bucks. I don't know if it's a day or a month there. Uh, so a, a day, know. probably. A day. Yeah. No, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So uh, what, what had happened was uh, mm-hmm. the uh, American consulate, uh, because this guy from Univision actually uh, lives in America and I guess he's got a green card or he might be a citizen. Uh, uh, he, um, the American consulate got him out and he was very thankful for that. But he, he wouldn't he wouldn't at that point just say um, I'm thankful to Trump, <laughs> but uh, mm-hmm. he said yeah he, he wasn't as negative as he usually is and he, he was on Fox talking to uh, Hannity. <clears throat> uh, did you see that clip, Alex? No, because I don't watch Hannity. Well, oh, you mean you might learn something? <laughs> well, no, I already know all I need to know about Hannity. It's the biggest PhD. piece of shit I, I've ever had to deal with. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, this, this Maduro thing in, in uh, Venezuela, I mean, it's, it's, it's interesting what's going on there. I mean, you know, the, they, I don't know why Maduro won't allow the Americans to uh, give uh, food and aid. Uh, uh, because to, Maduro to is just like Trump. He's a prick. Yeah. Uh, well, it's Trump that's trying to send the food. Is it Trump? Medicine. Is it Trump who's trying to send the food, or the, well, American the United people? States? The United you know. States, yeah. Yeah, you know. that's Trump. Trump <laughs> wants the oil. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's. Uh, he doesn't give a shit about any country that doesn't have oil. Yeah. You know, don't we have enough to to sustain um, us? Uh, n- uh, not really. No. Do do you, do you sell anything out in the states oil? You export. Actually, our, I don't know. Our, yeah, our major, know. our right, the major place we get oil from, oddly enough, is Canada. Yeah. yeah. Well, uh, the pipeline yeah. runs through from Canada, that, and then it goes out somewhere else. I don't even think that oil that comes down through those two pipelines come into the states. Yes, it does. Oh. Crossing it. it. Yeah, oh. it's going all the way down to. Uh, get, it's all going all yeah, the way down to the Gulf of Mexico, somewhere else. Canada. Huh? Yeah. So no, no, Norway is a major oil country. Oil country. So. Oh well, then we'll have to attack you sometime soon. Uh-oh. Uh, yeah, we'll have to attack you sometime route. soon. Yeah. Well, yeah. Trump will be over for your oil soon. Yeah, he would. But uh, I'm, I, I'm too scary. Look at me. He, he won't get. He, uh, he won't get. <laughs> oh boy. Yeah. Yeah. So you know. 
but um, <clears throat> I don't know. I just I I I I've been. Marjorie has finally gotten to the point where she doesn't really want to watch uh, the television news again. You know how we had a boycott of it a couple of years mm. ago, yeah. And yeah. she's back there again now. She doesn't it was really a personal want... boycott. What, well, what channel is that? Well, no, yeah. no, it wasn't any channel. It was just <laughs> no. we didn't want to oh. watch cable news. Oh, oh, because okay. it it's so vapid. It's terrible. I mean, it's horrible. I mean, uh, oh yeah. Okay. You find the channel that agrees with your political opinion, and that's what you watch. Yeah, you know, okay. yeah. and yeah. and there's no place to go for even balanced news. They, you know, uh, they want to tell you that they're balanced or whatever, mm. but they're not. You know, they're one way or the other. So, so yeah. what do you what do you watch, Alex? Uh, do you uh, watch anything at all? Well, I, mean, I, I will uh, watch. I watch I, BBC. Right? I, I will. BB, well, BBC. I, uh, yeah. Uh, Okay, but the trouble I have with BBC is at least when I'm in the prime time to watch it for me, which is in mm -hmm. the mornings, they're running these little half hour programs that are like interview programs, and I'd like to see them doing the news. Okay, yes. So yes. I, I that's my problem with BBC. Uh, CNN yeah. is a little more even handed, but MSNBC is so one sided that yeah, while CNN, they're while you watch CNN? Well, well, yeah, well, but while MSNBC is one sided yeah, yeah, on yeah, my okay. on my side, yeah. I get a little bothered by their non impartiality. I would okay. have liked, for instance, mm -hmm. today when they were doing the wrap ups on the Michael Cohn hearings to have mm -hmm. somebody there who disagreed with them, you know, yes. and it was all nothing yeah. but Not people. Huh? Well, that's exactly what, what you, why I, I sent you that critical. email. And Wait a minute. Hold on a second. Exactly. Jeff, what, what did you say, Jeff? I said that, that CNN doesn't have enough critical thinking. Yeah. Yeah. They don't have that. But MSNBC doesn't mm -hmm. either. Uh, yes, Kevin. What was that thing you sent me? What happened? Well, uh, it was just I was uh, I was trying to get a different view, so I jumped over to Fox, mm -hmm. oh, and I watched the, the yo yos <laughs> on five. The truth? You wanted and I, the truth, and I huh? watched the the yo yos on five. But you know, it's the exact opposite. You know, because I watch MSNBC a lot, but then I get tired of their their normal bullshit. You mm -hmm. know, you get saturated with that. Well, and so I go over to Fox and I watch them and I get saturated with that. But it was pretty entertaining today because it was it, what I was trying to tell you was the exact opposite of Gabnet. I was going, I was going, Jesus Christ, there's three fills and one of us. <laughs> 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 but it was funny because poor Juan was trying to make a point and everybody was piling on him. And yeah. I thought it was a train wreck, but it was fun to watch. That guy but then Greg you go Gutfield. back over to MSNBC, and they're all sitting around there hoity-toiting themselves, mm -hmm. and it gets sickening after a while. So you go to CNN, and you try and level it all out, and then mm -hmm. it, it, you're right; it's it's saturated one way or the other, and it gets old after. Well, a while. you would like Even to get you would like to get a nice I'd like to sit on one I mean, channel. I mean, it, it, what do we have here? I mean, we have Phil, and sometimes we have. Uh, uh, SG. Uh, 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 well, I, I can't stand him. Uh, uh, but, but, and I can't stand him because he interrupts the show. In other words, last night when he put the, the Trumpy bear in front of the screen and stuff, you know, come on, we're trying to have a discussion. Don't try to hog yeah. the... No, 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 I, I can't wait. Don't do it. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. What? Uh, uh, did, uh, didn't you say something to me? No, 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 no. no, 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 no. Sorry about uh, no. another uh, was, another guy, uh, and and, and was, you know he uh, just disrupts the show, and his microphone isn't working, or he can't log on. And, you know, on the other hand, uh, you know, I um, I love Patrick, you know, and he's yeah. a, he's a right winger. But here, when we have two right wingers on, and we got the rest of us here, it's not exactly even, but it's you know it's at least more even than any of those networks are, and that's the yeah, way I think it should phone. be. I want to yeah, hear. Well, I want to hear a. a, a uh, I even like the Bill Maher show because at least he has on one conservative on every panel that he puts up there, so that there's a different. Uh, uh, opinion being thrown into the mix. So, so, how, so how do you like me then being new on the show? Who? Oh, I'm glad you're here because uh, I'm not going to be here for about two weeks. And so, oh, uh, oh, yeah. what do you mean you're you not going to get a love fest? When are you not going to be here for two weeks? 
Uh, I have a 7 a.m. flight on Friday mm -hmm. at, to the Bahamas, and uh, I have to I have to get up. I have, still pack a few things on Thursday, so mm -hmm. and there's going to be no fill Thursday. Uh, and then uh, I'm going to be on a boat in the ocean for uh, 11 day or eight days of actual on the boat. Uh, and uh, there's no internet. There's a satellite phone, but it's not mine. Uh, yeah. There's no internet. There's no uh, cellular. There's nothing. So we won't oh, have oh, you for two you, weeks starting you. when? This Thursday? Uh, yeah. Uh, so I, I'll, be back on, I'll be back on the 12th of March. So you 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 think that uh, uh you you thinking that I can take over for you you I, I hope yeah. so yeah, yeah. yeah. just oh. just do do the conservative thing you become a Republican for a few oh, weeks well folks okay, okay. Uh, I, I, this is the time for you to then I think so, so so this is your last night yeah oh okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, I hope it isn't my last night because I'm going to be diving with tiger sharks. Oh. It might be. It might be my last <laughs> night. <laughs> no, Trump cage. might be gone when you get back. Yeah, yeah. really. Yeah. Uh, but uh, nah, I, you know, uh, maybe we pull into a port or here or there, and I might be able to get some cell service. But uh, you know, I'll call if I can. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, if, if, uh, if you can. But otherwise, everybody, the coast is clear. It's clear. Yeah. <laughs> the coast is clear. Oh, you can all call you know, now. I, I, I just want to say one thing. I, as my opinion, I'm not trying to change anyone's mind, and I believe that mm. everybody here is right, <clears> and that. You know how all roads lead to Rome? Well, I would and like to say I, that some some yeah, ways are yeah, a different way yeah. to get there. I would agree with you that I like to think that all the people here are right, but you aren't. So, uh, well, you know, well, that that just shows me the level of your uh, yeah. uh, you know, your Rich, Richard. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, Richard. I, I uh, <clears throat> uh, you say that everybody's right and everything. Uh, I I think we all want yeah, I, 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 I kind of agree with that, uh, and I think it's very, um, it's extraordinarily nice, and uh, it's a thrill to, like, be together and talk about it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. but... You uh, know, I, I don't believe <laughs> that anybody here doesn't want the best for this country or the world, and, you know, and no, I know no, I do, oh, yeah, I just yeah, think okay. that yeah, my way it. of getting there is better than somebody I, else's way, but it's all the same. I can see that. The same thing. I can I can see that. Yeah. Uh, but but uh, I want to <clears throat> ask Alex. Um, you asked um, uh, about the other guys, uh, uh, and uh, uh, how do you like me being new new on the show? How do you like me coming on? Oh, I I think it's fine. I always like new blood on the show. You know. Yeah. It's like you're fine. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. Oh no, okay. I I think you're just fine. Okay, uh, and so uh, please keep calling. We love having yeah, you here. I you will. Know? I will. You know, and it's I, nice to have somebody yeah. from another country too. Yeah. yeah, uh, yeah I, I mean, I we have Bree. He I calls mean, from Dubai every now and then. Yeah, and, yeah, uh, Bree. Yeah, from uh, Dubai. Yeah. You yeah, know. Yeah. Uh, but uh, uh, we certainly. I, I, I <clears throat> yesterday I was actually calling uh, Jack Bishop also. Huh? Yeah. Jack. Jack yeah. Bishop. Oh, yeah. 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 You're, you're, you're a longtime friend. Bree just said, having Phil makes the show good. Oh, huh? Thank you, Bree. <laughs> uh, no, it balances it out. You know, I mean, I, uh, I, I've i defended Phil's existence on this program many a time to people who go, oh, why do you have him on? I can't, uh, I can't stand him, you know, <laughs> blah, 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 blah. And I go, eh. You know, I mean, he's got an opinion and um, uh, he's respectful. I and I, uh, about, yeah. I disagree with him. I, you know, I can't believe that he's that horrible a person politically. But, <laughs> um, you know, but he's you know he 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 has a right and uh, yeah. he has a right yeah. to an opinion. Well, opinion. I'm glad you let us know tonight, Phil, because otherwise I would have wondered. I would have thought you were like uh, yeah, we've been you know, like Mike Allen, like, like yeah. Mike Allen, you know. Uh, but Alex, um, as I said, I called Jack Bishop yesterday. Yeah. After your show. Yeah. Uh, the the uh, intersection. Yeah, right. <laughs> and um, your old friend, your old buddy from yeah. this, he told me. Yeah. And we we just uh, hit it off from the first second. I I, I didn't know <clears throat> what kind of show uh, it was actually. You know. Yeah. I never called before. Neither does Jack. I'm trying to figure <laughs> it out. Okay, but but anyway, 
There was only one guy. I, I don't know if he, uh, there was a Jack and a guy, another guy sitting and oh, smoking. Oh, the coughing, the coughing guy. Oh, Mike, yeah. Yeah. Mike well, Allen. He, yeah. he, was he, I don't know. Is he a caller or? Yeah, he's a caller. Yeah, he's okay. A... He he was he didn't say much. So so me and Jack were talking and uh, all of us we just like uh, he's a major Rolling Stone fan, and I am too. Uh, and we got into records, and all of a sudden, we, we've been talking like uh, all, uh, you know, running out of time. And uh, he said, Hey, man, call, call me as, as much as you can. And uh, oh, yeah. I said, Yeah. And it was almost like uh, he's in Texas, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. So uh, it, it was almost like we, 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 uh, we uh, especially about the, the records and all, it was like, Hey, uh, I, I would say uh, I, I'll, I'm on the next plane. I'll see you soon. Hey, <laughs> he Alex, was you, that. He was a real that, nice guy. Yeah, Phil. Alex has got this. Uh, since you collect like vinyl, Alex yeah. has got this record, which is a what is it? A wax pressing of uh, <clears throat> uh, the Who, uh, Tommy. It's what, not a wax that, pressing. It, it's a test pressing. Test pressing. Uh, we, uh, test pressing of uh, Tommy. Yeah, Hill. he wanted to sell it, and then they, they nobody would. You know. uh, well, no, well, they couldn't. Well, uh, uh, the the people I tr the the people I tried to sell it to had no idea what it was worth. But, but what, it, what what does it look like? Is it a vinyl? It, press it's pressing? a vinyl test pressing. It has it has no label on it. It has a oh, white yeah. label, okay. and it and it just says. Tommy, uh, I don't even know if there's anything written on the white label, but there is a sheet of paper that came with it that yeah. went and said Tommy and yeah. opera, and then they had done a carrot thing and put in the word rock, and then the, all the <clears throat> songs were listed. So it was a test pressing yeah. for the for the, the who, well, before it, it was uh, ever released. This has got a sticker on it, it's like not not for not for sale or no, anything no, like that. No, no, it doesn't say a radio station. No, company. no, it's, it's, no it, not, this not like this was a test pressing. It was the kind uh, of thing they but, do. But is it a, uh, what it, kind of package is it? In? Normal, it's no package. No package. No package. Just uh, just sleeves. Uh, yes, yeah, and uh, it was you know it was a <laughs> it, this was what was put together before they ever released the album. They uh, did a test pressing it. to test the, yeah, I, you know. I know. I know about it. Uh, yeah. I, I had uh, my father educated me from yeah. I was two years so, old. So, uh, so consequently, but, but, but uh, actually, I brought somebody do, in do, and do they, they couldn't figure still, out what it do, was worth. So I just wouldn't give it to them, you know. But uh, do you still have it? Yeah. Oh, uh, what's the price if you want to sell it? I have no idea. You know, I have no idea what to sell it for, uh, no and it's idea. in it's in California. Uh, okay. But uh, maybe I'll uh, check it out and see if I can find it and online uh, some price of it. And, yeah, I um, I don't know if you can find any place online where there is a test pressing well, of the Who. Uh, by, maybe not. I maybe don't there's other the test pressings that have sold uh, from other albums. And it, you know uh, that may have as much gravitas well, as uh, Tommy uh, or less. But. No, I I think nothing would have more gravitas than Tommy. I mean yeah. that that was probably the quintessential Who album. I mean it's not. I yeah. don't think it's their best album, but it is the quintessential oh, oh, tough, Who album. Far from the best. Yeah, but it is their quintessential album. Yeah, that, and that's it, right. it's, yeah, it's the it's, one that everybody has in their library. But you know? but uh, if you take if you compare Tommy to Quarterfinia, Quarterfinia is far oh, better. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So, um, Th that's a great one. Yeah, Quarterfinia. Yeah, uh, and but uh, they, they and they weren't my favorite. My favorite group back then were the Kinks. I love the Kinks. Oh, I, I I like the Kings. I have a, I like the Kings too. I have all those groups. My father, actually, I, I think I was uh, Jack Bishop. He he asked me. No, he told me first. Uh, I didn't heard Robert Johnson before I was twenty five. Yeah. So I said uh, uh, I heard him uh, about. I think I was maybe five. <laughs> Robert Johnson, uh, wow. Robert Johnson, yeah. The, yeah. The, the, the early blues, blues guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. I, I never uh, developed I a, a taste uh, back in the day for like Jethro Tull or things <clears throat> like that, but I really like it now. 
You know, what, what uh, final I didn't like Jethro yeah. Tull then, and I don't like Jethro Tull yeah. now. Uh, yeah. You know, and I, 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 I like the Eagles. You know, I mean, you know. I never I liked saw, the Eagles. I saw Jethro Tull uh, last year. Yeah, mm -hmm. I never liked the Eagles. I don't know why. I mean, I, I their songs were okay, but I was never yeah. crazy. They, they are, they are, uh, Joe Walsh. I Joe think Walsh is great. She, <laughs> yeah, but I yeah. think she, he's better uh, solo. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Or, or, he adds a lot to the group, though. But I saw I'm, person. I'm a Stokes guy, and uh, uh, I had to uh, to please my father. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, Lydia, oh, Lydia, uh, have you seen Lydia? Lydia the tattooed and, lady. And, and, and uh, my, my, my teenage riot, I, you know, everybody has a teenage riot against the parents, right? So I, I, I was uh, planning, uh, my father ha had all these records uh, and uh, even more now and all pe people was coming and going and uh, I, you know so uh, <clears throat> he, he, he kept uh, he kept talking about Stones being um, and, Keith, and, and Keith Richards being the greatest uh, guy in the rock business and, and all that uh, yeah. and, and, and some other bands and uh, I thought I was um, I thought I, I gotta find a band that really piss him off. So I, <clears throat> I, I, I found a Dirty Deeds on the cheap, ACDC. Yeah, ACDC, yeah. yeah. Yeah, with Bon Scott era. Yeah. And I put that on, and I, uh, I think I was, and I was not old enough to drink, but I had, I was like 16, but I had like, I, I heard two songs, I went straight. And to the store, and I bought a case of beer, and we played it as a record. And <clears throat> I played it for my father, and he said, uh, "Yeah, yes, okay, you know." Uh, and I said, "Yeah, okay, I'm, I'm pissing him off here." So I, I, I get more ACDC records, right? Mm -hmm. So when I came to like, uh, you know, uh, the, I don't know if you're familiar with the Bon Scott era. Yeah, yeah, the, yeah. yeah. So I came to like uh, Highway to Hell. Yeah. Every, uh, the last one we bought before uh, uh, Back in Black. Uh, and um, uh, I played it as loud, as loud as I could and uh, I asked him and said, I really like this. It's much better than the Stones. And, uh, yeah, you know. My question is who modern day do you listen to? Uh, yeah. Uh, actually, I'm going, uh, I'm, <clears throat> I'm going to finish by saying that. Uh, I actually, after uh, saying that, uh, I uh, it was like a month later. Mm -hmm. as I, I took, I was in my uh, the living, I, I was living at home. I went in the living room where, where my father has the uh, a long uh, the whole roll of collection, mm -hmm. and up on the up on the top of the shelf was a box, a black box. With and the ACDC logo on, and, <laughs> and the complete ACDC collector's edition. Wow! And and I said to myself, okay, there, that's there, that's, yeah. there, there, that was there was that riot. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> I got to play the theme song because we're running out of time here. Uh, Phil, I guess we won't see you for a couple of weeks. Don't drown. Yeah, well, don't get eaten by a shark. Don't right? get eaten by a shark. Uh, and, uh, you know, we'll uh, uh, we'll see you in a couple of weeks. In the meantime, the coast is clear, everybody. Yeah, oh, the, yeah, the, the liberals we, can come on. We out can of their come holes. on. We can just <laughs> trash Trump. And, well, the Patrick would then call. And, uh, you know. Well, he's not he, a Trump supporter. Patrick doesn't like Trump. He doesn't like Trump either. Yeah. And he's, but he's a conservative. Hey, listen, everybody. Thank you, Charles. I appreciate it. Phil, thank you. Thank you to Kevin. Thank you very much, Richard. We enjoy having you as our newest addition to our uh, to our group. And uh, uh, Jeff Stein. Yeah, Jeff, uh, uh, thank you so much. Why don't all of you give a big wave goodbye, uh, and I will, uh, I will wave back, okay? All right, there we go. Okay, there they go. All right, that's our our panel, and uh, we'll miss uh, we'll miss Phil. We really will. Uh, and so you you guys are gonna have to take up the slack. Okay, all right. Okay. Uh, anyway, that's it for tonight. That's it for our citizen panel. 
Uh, they will uh, be back again tomorrow night uh, with hopefully a whole uh, a whole passel of people uh, sans fill. Uh, meanwhile, stay tuned for the intersection, which is next uh, with uh, Jack Bishop. I'll be back again tomorrow night. I don't know if Damien's going to be on tomorrow night or not. We're still trying to solve his problems, but uh, uh, I'll be on tomorrow night at ten o'clock East uh, Eastern time. <laughs> and in the meantime. As always, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Bye-bye. <laughs>